Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nesnes here, and in today's video, it's going to be another high-level money-making guide. You guys seem to really enjoy the money-making guides, so I decided to do another one targeted to high-level players. I always try to provide a bunch of variety and show three different methods in every money-making guide that I make, mostly to give you guys some variety and inspire you to make some money and progress your bank further. This video will focus on higher level methods, mostly in the 80 to 90 skill range. So without further ado, make sure to leave a like below and let's get right into the first method. So the first method we are going to be doing is excavating artifacts, disassembling them to turn them into historic and classic components, and finally make those into crates and sell for profit on the GE. For this method, you will only need level 5 archaeology, but to make this any good, you will want at least level 80 to 90. You'll also need 20 invention. I recommend having an Elder Rune Matic or Imkondo Matic fully perked out. This method gets better based on the archaeology gear and upgrades you have. So the higher archaeology level you are, and the more archaeology upgrades that you have, the better this method will be. For my gear setup for this method, I am using the full archaeology outfit, although the master outfit is by far the best. I am also using an Incondo Matic with Fortune 3 and Hone 6. You should use the best Matic that you have. I am also using Grace of the Elves with Signs of the Porters to bank materials. And then I also have Luck of the Dwarves, but this can be replaced with the Ring of Whispers. As for my inventory, I just have the auto sifter, which is super nice for turning your soil into materials and then your porters will just bank them instantly. However, you can bring a soil box and just bank the soil when it's full. The water fiend pouch is also very good because we will be extracting so many artifacts that the water fiend pouch will make it so there is a chance that the water fiend can double them for you. So it's really good to bring. So, to start off this method, you'll want to go to the Caradet dig site, which is the first dig site you ever unlock. And you'll want to go to the first excavation site that you unlock, which only requires level 5 archaeology, the Venator Remains. What you'll want to do is just excavate these remains for artifacts. If you're level 90 archaeology, like I mentioned, you should easily get these super, super fast. Now, this method can be as AFK or click intensive as you want. The more click intensive it is, meaning you follow the time sprite around, the more artifacts and more money you'll make per hour. However, if you are AFK, you can still make a good amount of money per hour as well and just not follow the time sprite. So you'll just want to keep excavating remains, and when you have a full inventory of artifacts, just bank them at the bank chest nearby and keep repeating. It's really super, super simple. So now, once you've spent a bit of time collecting all your artifacts, it's now time to restore them. I will link a calculator in the description table below with all the materials you need to restore your artifacts, and you also will have collected some from excavating, so make sure that you keep that in mind. But you will also need to buy some, which we'll do now, and we'll factor the cost into the end profit. So now you'll just want to restore your artifacts, and then after you're done restoring them, you'll want to disassemble them for classic and historic components. After this, you'll want to go to an invention workbench and basically make these into crates of components. Now you may need some padded components, which are pretty simple to get and most of you probably have them, but if not, you can disassemble something like green dehyde bodies, which may cost a tiny little bit, but honestly not too much. And you can use this to make historic crates and classic crates. So in total, I spent around 30 minutes excavating artifacts and then five minutes restoring them. I got a total of a thousand historic components and 20 classic components. The classic components came out to around 480K for the 20. And then I sold a historic large crate that I made for 6.2 mil. This came out to 6.7 million GP in 35 minutes. 
However, we did spend around 2.3 million GP on supplies, which mean our profits in 35 minutes was 4.3 million GP or around 7.5 million an hour. I can see this method making you about 5 million GP per hour while you're AFK, all the way up to 8 or 9 mil per hour if you're focusing on the time sprite and have all the good gear. If you have the archaeology levels, this is a solid AFK money making method and can be extremely AFK when not following the time sprite and I highly recommend you try it out. Alright guys, so the next method we're going to be looking at is going to be charging empty divine charges at cursed energy in the wilderness. For this method you are going to need level 101 invention, 99 divination, and 81 summoning is recommended but it's not needed. You'll also need to make a divine omatic. For equipment you should use the full elder divination outfit with the divination skill cape. I am also using Luck of the Dwarves and Grace of the Elves for Saren Spirits, as I'll keep these on if I die. However, if you don't feel safe, you can skip out on these, although there should be no way for you to get Skulled, as you won't be using any weapons or anything. Of course, you do need the Divine Omatic Vacuum, and keep in mind these are always lost on death, so if you lose your Divine Omatic when you die, you'll need to make another. You can, however, use an energy gathering scrimshaw in your pocket slot, but I don't like to take the extra risk. You'll also want your divine omatic filled with empty divine charge, and then also have a nightmare muspa pouch as well. Now for your inventory, you'll just want to bring a bunch of food, phoenix necklaces, ceridome and bruise, a little bit of prayer, and a teleport just in case someone attacks you. However, since you are destroying all cursed energy and memories into divine charges, that's the nice thing about this method is that you won't be automatically sculled at the cursed energy, and since you are in level 25 wilderness, you can instantly tele out using the wilderness sword or amulet of glory. I recommend putting the wilderness sword on your bar so you can spam click and tele to Edgeville if you see a PKer. However, with enough food it should be pretty easy to get away. I did not encounter any PKers while I was here testing this method. So for this method all you have to do is basically set your divino magic to destroy energy and memories. Then you just harvest curse whips at the wilderness volcano which can be gotten to easily from the wilderness lodestone. I did this for around 30 minutes and it was honestly really AFK. I didn't encounter anyone and I actually ended up getting 37 divine charges. This means in total we ended up spending around 915k for the empty divine charge and we made 3.6 mil worth of divine charges in 30 minutes, which comes out to a profit of 2.7 million GP in 30 minutes or 5.4 mil GP per hour, very, very AFK. I personally really like this method and I highly recommend to anyone with the stats to try it. Of course it's in the wilderness, so make sure you're careful and don't bring anything that you can't afford to lose. All right, so the next method we are going to be looking at is killing smoke and eye hills. Now for this method, you're going to need 96 summoning for a pack yak, 73 Agility, 76 Slayer, 79 Magic, 75 Divination, 96 Herblore for Overloads, and 90 plus Range. You will also need the Fate of the Gods quest completed. Soul Split and Turmoil are also highly recommended with at least tier 80 range weapons. You will also need a Shard of Zeros, which I will link on how to get back in the description in case you had lost yours. For my gear setup, I ended up using my best ranged armor and weapons, but something like Pernix and Ascensions or a Wyvern Crossbow works just fine. I also recommend Amulet of Souls since we'll be soul splitting or an EOF if you have one. I use Nightmare Gauntlets and Fleeting Boots, and then I just have my Kiln Cape, Ascension Bolts, Luck of the Dwarves, and of course you need your Shard of Zeros on you so you aren't attacked by all the Nihils at once. 
In terms of aura, you'll want to use, use Sharpshooter or the Reckless Aura for most kills per hour. I ended up using the Reckless Aura for this video. As for your inventory, you'll want a pack yak with winter storage scrolls. You'll need overloads, a bit of bruise and restores for restoring your prayer and your health. You can bring a little bit of food if you want. An enhanced Excalibur is also good for some free heals if you have it. And Charming Imp and the Gold Accumulator are also really nice to have. Now, to get to the Nye Hills, you'll want to go to the Eagle's Peak Lodestone and walk south until you get to the World Gate. You can also use your Sixth Age Circuit to teleport there. Once you get to the World Gate, you'll want to quick dial the World Gate to Frenske and then travel to the Pit. Once you're at the pit, you will stand in the middle and select Summon Nihils for Slayer. Now make sure your Shard of Zeros is worn or you will be attacked when the Nihils spawn. Now the easiest Nihil you'll want to be killing is the Smoke Nihil. You can kill the other Nihils, but their special attacks are a bit harder. The Smoke Nihil will just drain your stats, which your overloads will easily counteract. However, I will leave a link in the description to the other Nihil's attacks in case they get onto you or you want to kill them as well. But personally, I just kill the smoke Nihil's and will only kill the others when they get onto me or they're super low health. Now all you'll want to do is attack the Nihil's and it's very good to bleed them and then walk them around a little bit and then just threshold them down. You can also trap them in a corner and use things like bombardment to kill more of them at once. The smoke Nihils are weak to range, so it should be pretty easy to kill them. In total, with decent gear, you should be looking at around 150 kills per hour, up to 200 kills per hour on the higher end. You'll want to pick up everything and make sure to collect the Elder Charms as you'll need these for later. You'll also want to yak back all the aviancy parts such as aviancy talons which are gotten from the smoke Nihils and all the other Nihil parts. So these are what make you the money. This is your main source of money so make sure you're picking up the untradeable Nihil parts and yakking them back. Now after you finish killing the Nihils, now it is time to make your Nihil pouches. What you'll need is 150 Elder Energy per pouch, which you should have gotten quite a bit from killing the Nihils, but you probably will have to buy a bit more. You'll need your Aviancy Talons or whatever Nihil parts you got, an Elder Charm, and one empty pouch per Nihil pouch being made. So in 20 minutes, I ended up getting 14 Nihil parts and I went and I made 14 Nihil pouches. I made 12 smoke and two ice. I did have to buy around 200K worth of energy and then I just used the rest of the energy that I got as drops. So in total, we made about 3.9 million GP in 20 minutes. Of course, we spent around 200,000 GP on energies and another 100 to 150k on supplies. So I would say our total is around 3.5 million GP made in just about 20 minutes, which comes out to well over 10 million GP per hour. But keep in mind I was using very good gear and killing mostly the Shadow Nihils pretty fast. I would say I got around 200 kills in the hour. This is an absolute great money making method that's going to make you 8 to 10 mil per hour if you have decent range gear and it'll be even better if you have a Nihil Slayer task so make sure to always do your Nihil Slayer task and if you want to camp out and make some good money, killing Nihils is a really really good way. Alright guys, so if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like down below and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already for tons more RuneScape 3 content. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers, so let's see if we can get there after this video. That would be amazing. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like hitting 10,000 subscribers. That's a number I never thought I'd ever even be close to. So thank you guys so much for the support. Comment below what you want to see next, what sort of guides, what sort of money-making guides. I love doing these money-making guides, so I'll probably do more next. So let me know the type of theme you want, low-level, mid-level, high-level, AFK, mobile, skilling, combat, slayer. You know, Just let me know, and I will do it. 
Um, yeah, I want to thank all my channel members. Thank you guys for the support. I love you guys. You guys are amazing. Um, and uh, if you'd like to join my channel memberships, you can click the join button below or the box that pops up on screen or in my description. And you'll get a ton of cool perks like PVMing with me and add on Discord, exclusive Discord rank, all types of cool stuff. And you'll support the channel. So yeah, I just want to thank everyone for watching and uh, I will see you guys in the next video.